We're here to honor the service of the class of 1957 of the United States Military Academy at West Point. My father, Gar Davidson, was your superintendent. He honored your service over five decades and more in service of the country. Your class was one of the leading classes in the Cold War against the Soviet Union, shed blood on the battlefields of Vietnam, and created a great record for the Military Academy and the country. We're here to honor that service. Thank you for that service. To the American soldier, a hero in every sense of the word, a man willing to lay down his life for his brother and his country. Presented to the Corps of Cadets by the classes of 1935 and 1936, the lives and destinies of valiant Americans are entrusted to your care and leadership. This is what leadership is all about. The American soldier. Mikey Stadium, home of West Point football heroes and great Americans. The first touchdown in Mikey Stadium was scored by Gar Davidson at the opening of the stadium in 1926. The chapel. The cadet chapel where men and women of character and honor are led and trained to aspire to the highest human values. Without the underpinnings of character, all else is meaningless. And faith, duty, honor, country. Men and women who are willing to sacrifice their lives for another and for their country. The highest ennoblement of mankind, according to Douglas MacArthur in his famous speech at West Point in 1962. Is that protected the Hudson Highlands? and the chain that went across the river to prevent the British ships from splitting the colonies. One of the most beautiful scenes in the world. In honor of the Civil War combatants and those who lost their lives. Some of the newest members of the Long Gray Line, brand new. One of the great sights in the world, certainly one of the beautiful sights of West Point. Sylvanus Thayer, creator of one of the great institutions of the world. Douglas MacArthur, originally, the words in war were not there. Only was, there is no substitute for victory. When Gar Davidson saw this, he said, that's not what MacArthur said. What he said was, in war, there's no substitute for victory. In every other form of human endeavor, how you play the game is just as important as whether you win it. So the words in war were chiseled into the granite at his instance. Garrison Davidson, your superintendent, he so admired the accomplishments of the classes of 57, 58, 59, and 60. His boys, his men. You won the Cold War. You defeated the Russians. You kept our country safe. You became members of the Long Gray Line. He is an inordin inordinately proud of all of you. He is hugely proud of all of you and looks down today and says to the classes which he supervised, 
Well done. You became members of the Long Gray Line, just as I knew you would. God bless you for your service. General Maxwell Taylor, Chief of Staff of the Army, among other things, whose son Tom is a decorated hero of one of Gar's boys classes. Another distinguished graduate and a football player. This is the monument given to West Point by the class of 1957. It speaks to duty, honor, country. It's the key statement about what West Point is truly all about. And the class of 57 has said it extremely well. The class went on to become an honored class in the field, in combat, included a chief of staff of the Army, uh, many men who stayed in the military long beyond the other classes and contributed to the winning of the Cold War against the Soviet Union. God bless you, class of 1957. The class of 1957 lost a dozen men shedding their blood and their lives in Vietnam in the service of the country. The class paid its price on the battlefield and became a strong part of the Long Gray Line. By the class of 1957, a lifetime gift to the Military Academy stating its most basic principles of duty, honor, country, and service. Given by the class of 1957, restating the most basic principles of the academy. A cadet will not lie, cheat, steal, or tolerate those who do. There are those, including Gar Davidson, who believe that the honor code must go much further than that, and that this states just the very basic principles of honor. Thank you to the class of 57 for putting all the basic statements of honor in one place at West Point. From Robert E. Lee, superintendent of the Military Academy in 1852 to 55, there's a true glory and a true honor, the glory of duty done, the honor of the integrity of principle. Colin Powell, honor, your word is your bond. Truth, honesty, and character are your watchwords never to be forgotten. Those of you who will accomplish great things will achieve the elevation of character that constitutes honor. If you do not develop honor, if you do not embrace the finest sense of justice that the human mind can frame, you will not be worthy of the confidence West Point and your country will place in you. General Douglas MacArthur, duty, honor, country. The code which those words perpetuate embraces the highest moral laws and will stand the test of any ethics or philosophies ever promulgated for the uplift of mankind. Class rings of the United States Military Academy from the earliest days to the most recent days. Heroes, coaches, men, women, superintendents, deans, commandants, second lieutenants, generals, the long gray line. Ed Newman, killed in Vietnam in 1968. the rings of the generals of the army, MacArthur, Eisenhower, and Bradley. At West Point, some important words are literally engraved in stone. Another. And another. and another, and yet another. Gar Davidson would say that this is one of the most important, compassion or consideration of your fellow man. So in this resting place of West Pointers, heroes of all kinds, including those who gave their lives for the country, 
including George Gothels, Ed White, Lucius Clay, Ed White Sr., General William Westmoreland, many members of the academic board who were here when your classes were here, Billingsley, Renfro, Stevens, Schick, Barrett, Stamps, Counts, Gillette, Esposito, Bill Bessel, Professor of Math, and then Dean of the Academic Board. A position later held by Jerry Galloway. And those who gave their lives for their country in battle. The most honored of all. Those of your classmates who were in their final resting places, being able to say, well done. Being part of the long gray line, having taken their place, being the shoulders on which the young men and women in Iraq and Afghanistan stand tall, and upon which the fundamental defense of our country will go on as long as needed. God bless all of you men and their women of the Military Academy and West Point. Be it be said, well done. All Vietnam. Many killed within weeks or months of their arrival in country. Rest in peace. And Garrison Davidson, your superintendent, my dad, inordinately proud of you, all four classes. God bless you, gentlemen. May he rest in peace. New members of the long gray line. Gentlemen and your ladies, because it's just as much theirs as it is yours, your West Point. And those to come after you, for whom you have led the way. There's Stuart Wright hiding behind the beard. One more time. I just swore we were together for two years. Ed, pushing, Sparky. His, 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 his memory is failing. I'm talking first year. First year, we were... Ladies and gentlemen, please remove your headgear. You are invited to join the cadet choir as they sing the alma mater.
Hold on. Parade. Press. That is impressive. <laughs> Isn't it? It's just absolutely so much better. Was wrong, but we actually have army blue in because if the ladies come up in June, she says they don't have army blue anymore. The passive review serves two functions for the superintendent. Oh, oh. So all these stories you're telling are do peace for the That's uh, it's like the regiment of Sombre Amuse, right? Remember that squad's right? Sombre squad stuff they made us yeah. Sombre Amuse, yeah. right? They're not playing that. Today. Not playing that. That's the one that they did. I enjoy it so much.
Sergeant Major Nicholas Esslinger from Oakley, California. Sergeant Major is Cadet that's Command Sergeant cow. Major John Griffin, yeah, Washington. Yeah, that's a cow. Yeah. Yeah. Company A is yeah. Commander Virginia. Hey, who's that? Sergeant uh, Yeah. First Sergeant. Oh, yeah. From Oxford, Mississippi. The first sergeant is Cadet First Sergeant. The second battalion, South Carolina. Company F is commanded by Cadet Captain Christopher McCool from Weirton, West Virginia. The first sergeant is Cadet First Sergeant David Felton. Is Cadet Command Sergeant Major Elizabeth yeah. Gerard from Huntington, Red New York. Commander. Yeah, Captain. Yeah. Okay. Company B is commanded by Cadet Captain from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Cadet First Sergeant Dan Lassar from Loxley, Alabama. And from Granby, Connecticut. The First Sergeant is Cadet First Sergeant Eric Baker from Cincinnati. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing of the Army song, The Army Goes Rolling Along. Please feel free to sing along as it is played. Other song too. Yeah. Four minutes, sir. Four minutes. Four minutes, sir. Four minutes. <laughs> four minutes. Four, three minutes. That's about the time to get out of bed, right? Yeah. Three minutes. Get out of bed about there they go. Kind of marching with it. There they go. They go the hell, There you go. Oh, oh.
before I begin this and introduce the wonderful acts that we have for you, I want to do something that uh, I'm going to take advantage of the opportunity of having the microphone. A few well, uh, we were supposed to go down to the tunnel, and there were buses there for 47, 52, and all that, and no buses for 57. And then they said, go to level three. I asked the you know, class A, Harry at the moment, wonderful young people, dedicated, doing their absolute damage. They had, they had these little radios. Remember the little radios? And I, I went up to a couple of them and said, what's going on? Where are the buses? And they're talking on the radio. After it was all over, seriously, I asked one of the, I asked one of the class A's what happened. And she said, we were on our radios together, just a few of us, and there was an authoritative voice that came on every moment or two, and it would say, send him to the tunnel. And a few minutes later, send him to level three. And then a few minutes later, don't tell him anything. <laughs> and then, once the buses did show up, and some of us got on the buses, and then she said, the strangest, we didn't recognize that voice. And the strangest thing happened. There was silence on the radio net. And then they heard the following words. Rock Martin, out. <laughs> you never know, folks. Uh, I'd like to welcome, welcome, uh, before we begin, Ann Zabriskie. Ann, where are you? Now he may sort of slip in a little bit later, but you see that the horn here on the floor is called a it's called a baritone. Five years ago played a cornet, that little thing. Well, tonight he's gonna to play the baritone, but you'll hear from him just a wee bit later. Uh, our our first uh, couple Constructed. My goodness, she all built just like a brick chicken house. <laughs> this is a Japanese babe had a vision of roariness. I think to myself, she lives. Hot dog. Oh, joy. There's a red beauty pie and sweater. I'm making Jane Russell to look just like skinny on a fat boy. <laughs> so I am winking at her and saying, uh, hello, baby doll. Where you been on my ride? Are you, are you right to go for riding my Jeep? And as she answered me in her musical voice, she said, Getting lost, you little Oriental creep. I run, haha, this very funny joke. And then I say, Please, kiddo, can I, you see, I have a terrific heart burner for you. And you are cold as well, dig as knee. And she said, No, no, really, I am very hot tomato. 
I'm going to put on my crazy red shop, crazy red socks, and get the double shot of sake over the rocks. But when I take it home, I feel so tickled. I should give me a big kiss and say, good night, honey bucket. Be careful, not take over a nickel. Now Suzuki and me, we are wed, and with great joy, I am flipping my head. I am keeping up on foggy, foggy do. She are cooking for me rice and dried squid. Everybody, twice and all I long to hear you far away you rolling river oh Shenandoah I long to hear you away I'm bound to go the wide Missouri
The following speech was given by Gar Davidson to every incoming class during his tenure as superintendent. It may or may not have actually been given to the class of 1957, but it certainly applies to the class of 57 as they entered the academy and then took their place as members of the Long Gray Line, performing brilliantly in the battlefield and in their service to the country. I did do it for the class of 58 and class of 59, <coughs> who uh, were generous enough to let me come do this because I figured this is my honor. Why do I do this? Uh, my roots go back a long way at West Point. Uh, my mother and my father met here when she was dragging cadets and he was a young football coach. I was born here. I married the dean's daughter, Connie Bessel, Bill Bessel. Uh, my uncle was Al Grunther, I Ike's chief of staff, NATO commander, four-star general. Dick Grunther of the ALG was my cousin, shot through the stomach in uh, Korea. So there are a lot of heroes of the military. One of them is not me. I was never where bullets flew. I elected not to follow my father. I thought that was an impossible task. He was one of the heroes of the 20th century. He was a football player, played on the great army teams in the 1920s. Light Horse Harry Wilson played against Notre Dame and the Four Horsemen. He was the coach at the age of 29, had one of the greatest records in the history of West Point. He was Patton's engineer in North Africa, Sicily, um, Patton pinned his own stars on my dad, the youngest general in the army at the time at the age of 39. Went all the way through France into Germany, presided over the first war crimes trial. Thought he was done after four years away while my mother was raising us. Then Korea went off and we were pushed down in the Sun perimeter and MacArthur sent for him and said, come build the Davidson line, which he did. Led the breakout, captured 3,000 of the enemy, switched hats to the infantry, took the 24th Division all the way to the Yala River until the Chinese almost wiped them out. Uh, came back and then had his dream job to be your suit. That was the dream of his life. He started for the first time in 200 years in the history of the Military Academy, um, a review of the curriculum of the Academy and changed it only in small ways at that time, but a monumental change that's now being realized by historians to make him the greatest superintendent in the history of West Point. You will see historians start to talk about that since there. So, I'm proud of him, and more than that, he was proud of you. And so I think when I come to see West Pointers, I think you guys are too close to what you do. You don't realize what you've done. You don't realize what you've done for the country. And so I don't think you really appreciate what the nation thinks about you. So I'd like to come back and remind you what you've done. I never know the exact words to say, but God took a hand in it this time as I was leaving the house to come up. My wife, Connie, said, um, get that last box out of the garage where you had it out there. You need to get through it. Get it out of the way. I don't want it here while you're gone. So I went over. I opened the box, and guess what was the top thing on the box? It was my dad's talk to you 50 years ago. I'm not going to read it all, but I'm going to read a couple of things because, A, it shows you as the members of the Long Gray Line, and B, it shows your service to the country. And this is a little of what he said to you. I think you realize now in the retrospective of 50 years where you fit. <coughs> when you entered the East Valley Port at Central Barracks last week, you provided the 159th link in the chain that forms the Long Gray Line. Every class that has composed that chain sometime during his career has been called upon to fight in the defense of our country, except, of course, the classes that have graduated since the Korean conflict. West Point has never failed to provide the leaders necessary for that defense. Your class will be no exception. Sometime, you and your turn will be called upon to fight for our way of life and to provide the leaders necessary for that purpose. Well, how long did it take for that prophecy to come true? <coughs> Within a very short time, you and your classmates were in Vietnam shedding your blood leaving people behind and bringing back men who would never be the same again. Beyond that, over the next decades, 
you and your classmates help win a very hot cold war. Over the next 20 or 30 years, you would make our country safe. He also said, <coughs> West Point will train you for that change. And above all, you will receive here at West Point the development of an integrity <coughs> and a character in each one of you that on the battlefield can withstand the most compelling of human instincts, the instinct for self-preservation. The Academy is dedicated to the unswerving purpose of turning out men of quality who can be entrusted with the lives of their fellow countrymen and the security of their country. Think about that. You can be entrusted with the lives of your fellow countrymen and the security of your country. That's a singular honor that you and men like you have done for decades, now for centuries. To accomplish that, we follow a unique pattern founded on an extreme devotion to duty, a deep love for country, and a high regard for honor. You're members of the same long gray line that produced Grant, Sherman, Sheridan, Lee, Jackson, Pershing, Bradley, Patton, Eisenhower, and a whole host of others. Each of those individuals, in their time, pulled back, back their chins just as far, raised their chests just as high, and polished their shoes and brass just as thoroughly as you're doing at the present time. They too <coughs> ran and drew from morning till night. While you're here at the military academy, and these words should now ring true to you, you will make friendships deeper, closer, more lasting than any you have known in your lives. Most of them will span at least half a century of time and a world and area. It may be surprising to you, he said, that I would gladly swap my position here with any of you today. Think about that, from a three-star general. <coughs> During June week, as you will now do, one of the highlights is the march of the graduates from the officer's mess to the Thayer Monument. To me, that was always an inspiring sight. As a cadet, I watched those men go by with their classes and could easily envision the deeds that they had performed at the China Wall, in the swamps and jungles of the Philippines, at San Juan Hill, at Chateau Thierry, at Bellow Wood. Last June, my class held its 30th reunion. As we marched by, it was not hard for me to harken back to those days when I was a cadet and watch other classes go by. In my class now, in our turn, and you in your turn, we had those who hobbled, those who had saluted with their left hand, we had one chap who couldn't see, others simply weren't there. We in our turn had become a symbol of the deeds for which West Point stands, and I'm certain that you, in your turn, although it seems distant today, will go through the same experience. Now, in closing, let me say that I feel the class of 1960 has gotten off to a fine start. You're just starting to write the first chapter in your service careers. When the chapters are closed years from now, let the record say, well done. Well, I'm here this morning on behalf of my father, your suit, to report that he's looking out on you, his boys, and is supremely proud of what the class of 1960 and every one of you has accomplished. I can hear him saying, well done, 1960. As his son, I'm honored to be here to video your 50th reunion <coughs> as a very small token of my honor and respect for you and for him and all men and women at West Point. God bless you. I'm here as Gar Davidson's son to tell you how proud he became of the class of 1957 and for all you did for West Point and for the nation. From fighting valiantly in Vietnam, from shedding your blood on the battlefield, to winning the Cold War against the Soviet Union, you fell in line and became members of the Long Gray Line as decades of West Pointers have before you. He looks down and says, well done. God bless you, members of the class of 1957. They are here in ghostly assembly.